Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm one of the co-founders of Hybrid Consulting. Here we harness the transformative power of analytics to address intricate HR challenges. Today's hot topic, the power of statistics in diversity analysis. In many organizations, if diversity is part of analytics at all, it often stops at diversity dashboards. The likes of showing the proportion of women versus men among employees, maybe over time and perhaps with a departmental breakdown. With 2027 approaching, however, some firms are already preparing for the compulsory EU data submission. The so-called Pay Transparency Act, which requires on the reporting on gender pay gap. Many companies don't distinguish between pay gap and pay equity, even though the difference is significant. But let's leave this topic for another video. Many companies stop here with diversity reporting without context. What is context after all? Should gender representation differ? If yes, how? Are the current numbers evolving by chance or as a result of specific actions? These questions cannot be answered with merely descriptive reports. Such reports often become a monthly checkbox. But organizations should dig deeper, not only because of the upcoming EU regulations, but also because diversity carries intrinsic business value. Consider this. According to Diversity Matters research by McKinsey and Company, companies with more than 30% women executives were more likely to outperform companies where this percentage ranged from 10 to 30, and in turn these companies were more likely to outperform those with even fewer women executives, or none at all. Let's explore a few scenarios where it's beneficial to go beyond traditional descriptive analytics. First, is male underrepresentation in senior roles by chance, or is there unconscious bias? If there's no bias, we'd expect equal representation of men and women in all job grades relative to their distribution in the workforce. A key square test can shed light on this. Second, what factors predict gender representation across various groups? Multiple linear regression can help. Are the observed engagement levels by gender reflective of the entire organization? If females are less engaged, what drives this? Is it different from male disengagement drivers? Fourth, do performance metrics differ between genders? If so, what's behind the disparity? Are there inclusion challenges affecting performance? These are just a few intriguing questions around diversity. Statistical back, back and analysis holds immense persuasive power. Consider two discussions with senior executives, one without statistical analysis, where your CEO might dismiss concerns as random occurrences, and another backed by rigorous data analysis, making your insights undeniable. The renowned statistician George E. P. Box once said, essentially all models are wrong, but some are useful. The power of statistics lies not in its absolute truth, but, its, but in its ability to clarify and counteract cognitive biases. Want to learn more? Dive into our website or reach out for an initial consultation. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button for more insights on people analytics. Engage with us on LinkedIn, explore our site, and if you complete our survey, you'll receive an in-depth assessment of your chosen HR processes with suggestions all free of charge. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, remember, diversity isn't just about numbers. It's about unlocking innovation and ensuring sustainable growth. See you soon.